Hey guys, these are 10 mixing tips that changed my life. Now I know the title of this video is cheesy, but I promise you, these aren't just any old 10 mixing tips that I threw together to make a video. These 10 tips played a huge role in helping me develop my professional sound, quit my day job, and start my music production career. So if you're looking to develop a sound so professional that you can start making money at it, you won't want to miss any of these tips. Let's get into it. Tip number one is to remove the sub bass frequencies in every instrument besides the kick and bass, even if you don't think there's any sub bass frequencies in that instrument. Low frequency dirt and mud hides in the most unexpected places, and it's exactly these hidden artifacts that can disturb and add mud to your sub bass. For example, let's take this hi-hat. You would never think to low cut a hi-hat because it's such a high frequency instrument. But if we add an EQ, turn on the analyzer, and play this hi-hat, there's a bunch of stuff here in the low frequency range. If you have too many instruments adding that much low frequency dirt to your mix, you're gonna lose a lot of headroom and ultimately your sub bass is gonna start to sound muddy. So what I like to do is I like to add an EQ. You can use any EQ plugin that you like. Turn on a low cut filter and just cut out every low frequency artifact in between 40 and 80 hertz because that's where your sub bass is the strongest. This type of filter will not take away from the quality of this hi-hat whatsoever, but it'll clear up all that dirt so that your sub bass can breathe. This next tip by far changed my life the most, and that is that you have to understand that there is a lot more people out there that like to sing or make music than people out there who actually know how to mix music. This means that there's a huge opportunity and demand for freelance mixing engineers to earn some serious side or full-time income. Before my success on YouTube and the success of my other projects like my sound banks and course platform, I used to make around six to $10,000 a month just mixing for people as a freelance mixing engineer. And it was this type of money that allowed me to quit my BS job at an auto body shop and actually focus on music full time. And trust me when I say this, when you can focus on music full time, that's when you really get good at it. And not only that, but most artists don't care if you don't have any major credits like you've worked for Kanye West or Katy Perry or Avicii. They just wanna know if you know how to mix a song and that's all the proof that you need. So you really have nothing to lose. I know I didn't have any major credits when I started my mixing business back in 2016. And it was because I made the choice to step out of my comfort zone and start mixing for people, even though I had no major credits or anything, that I was able to break free of my old life and start doing music full time. With platforms like SoundBetter, AirGigs, and Fiverr.com, selling your skills as a musician has never been more accessible. So stop waiting around and get out there and start hustling. My next tip is to use a reference plugin to compare your mix to a professional mix. I like to use Reference 2 by mastering the mix. There's just no closer way to reference a professional mix. To use a reference plugin, grab a professional song that's dynamically similar to your song. I'm gonna use Cheat Codes Sex and drag it in to my reference plugin. This song is similar to the song I have here. My reference song sounds like this. Now here's the magic of a reference plugin. It automatically gain matches your song with the reference song. So when we play back our song and we switch back and forth to the reference song, they play back at the same volume so I could clearly hear now discrepancies in my mix versus the reference mix. And just from switching back and forth right there, I could hear, clearly hear a couple discrepancies in my mix. My bass to lead ratio is off, so my bass is too loud. And then also, my hi-hat is dismal compared to the hi-hat in this reference track. So first, let's bring up the lead. Now that the lead's sounding pretty good, I'm gonna bring out my hi-hat. Listen to my hi-hat compared to the hi-hat in the reference song. <laughs> to 
To make it even more clear, I'm just going to solo out the high frequencies of the reference mix so we can compare that to the high frequencies of my mix. That reference mix is so much more percussive. So I'm going to go back into my mix now and I'm going to turn up this hi-hat and possibly even enhance it. Let's also boost the hiss on this hi-hat just a little bit. Let's unsolo this high band now and listen to our mix. Now we can clearly hear that my mix is pretty similar to that reference mix. And that's why I like a good old reference plugin. Tip number three is to EQ your reverbs. Reverbs are the widest full spectrum sound that you'll ever add to your mix. In other words, reverb is just a big sound that takes up a lot of headroom and can add a lot of mud to your mix without you even realizing it. It's so easy to add a reverb plugin to an instrument and just move on and forget about it, but you have to EQ the reverb. Back when I started mixing, I used to just add reverbs to every instrument and forget about them, and I could not figure out why I couldn't get my songs loud. And the simple answer was, there was too much reverb just going everywhere and taking up too much headroom. Watch this. If we take this funk clap, sounds like this, and we take just the reverb from it, and we look at the reverb under an imager and an EQ, we can see that the reverb emitted from this clap is so wide that it's all over the stereo image. And that's fine. That's what reverb does. Is it adds width to sounds, but also look at the frequencies that are emitted from this reverb. It has frequencies all over the EQ spectrum. That is a big sound. We have to tame this or else it's going to build up and ruin your mix. Every reverb plugin has an EQ module. On this plugin, this Vintage Valhalla Verb, it's my favorite reverb plugin, what I like to do is low cut filter the low frequencies out of the reverb. This isn't going to ruin the quality of the reverb. It's just going to allow the reverb to fit in the mix. And I like to do it up to 500 hertz. Also, I'll cut out some of the hiss from the reverb by pulling the high cut EQ filter down a bit. And I adjust that to my liking as well. But rarely will I have reverb that's wide open. That's just going to take up too much room. So if we give ourselves a good reverb mix on this snare, it still sounds like reverb, but now that reverb will fit in the mix. For this next tip, try balancing your mix in mono. The problem with balancing your mix in stereo is that there is a lot of what I like to call fake loudness in wide sounds. In other words, wide sounds sound louder than they actually are. And that alone can skew your ability to properly balance mix. Here's a melody that we're going to play back in mono. <laughs> Sounds nice, but if I turn this mono switch off and we play it back in stereo, it sounds so much bigger and more lush, but it's not actually louder. It just seems that way. So now what I do to eliminate the illusion of wide, loud sounds is I will go to the master fader of my song. I'll grab a plugin that allows me to put the song in mono and logic. We just go to imaging and then direction mixer, spread it down to mono. And now my entire mix is in mono. And now I can go through and adjust each instrument accordingly. Yeah. And that alone was like a life changer, especially with drums. That helps a lot with drums for this next tip. Don't mix your song the same day you made it. Your brain and your ears need a break after the mental strain of writing music. After endless hours of writing songs in front of your computer, your eyes hurt, your ears are strained, and your brain is fried. 
you have to give yourself a break because it's this type of exhaustion that will not allow you to hear the dynamics and frequencies of your song correctly so you're really not going to be an effective mixing engineer. So next time you write a song, I know you'll be excited to get that song finished and get it out as fast as possible, but just give yourself a break, go to sleep, wake up the next day, and set up a dedicated mixing session, and I guarantee the result of your mix will be 10 times more lethal than what they would have been if you did it a day earlier on the same day you wrote the song. This next tip is to combine any layered instrument before starting your mixing session. Mixing is a game of organization. The cleaner your doll is on your eyes, the more effectively and efficiently you'll be able to move through your mixing process. For example, let's take this drum beat and I'm going to show you how I would set this beat up for a mixing session. This beat sounds like this. If we take a close look at this, we can see that we have three hi-hat layers that are doing the same thing. This is an easy three layers that I can narrow down into one single layer. So now what I could do is I could take these three redundant layers, get rid of them, and we just took three layers and narrowed it down to one. If we look closer into this mix, we could see that our clap has a layer on it as well. Layers are totally fine. You just don't need to keep all your layers in there and not consolidated. So what I'm going to do is take these claps, right click them, bounce, in place. And now we have one stem instead of two. So that was just two instruments that we were able to take five whole layers and narrow them down into two. But imagine doing this for an entire song and narrowing down all of your layers into as few layers as possible, your project will end up looking so clean and minimalistic that you're gonna breeze through that mixing process and mix like a star. This next tip is fire, and I make my most dedicated students do this, and they always love the outcome of it. And that is to mix one of your songs and then hire a professional mixing engineer to mix that same song. And this will tell you where your mixing skills are lacking and exactly where you need to improve. On websites like Soundbetter, Fiverr, or Airgigs, for this example, we will use Soundbetter. You can go to soundbetter.com, click on this mixing engineers tab, and just find a plethora of professional mix engineers with some really great credits that you can hire to mix your song. This dude here is an old man with 150 million streams. He'll probably run your mix through some nice analog gear so you'll get to hear what that sounds like. We got some dude who mixed for Ludacris here, a Bruno Mars mixing engineer here, Dimitri Vegas and Like Mike over here. You get the idea. Hit up a freelancing website, hire a professional engineer to mix your song, there's really no better way to do it. For this next tip, if you really wanna develop the skill of mixing, you have to get yourself a pair of studio monitor headphones or a pair of studio monitors. Consumer grade headphones like Apple earbuds or Dr. Dre Beats are great headphones for listening to music on, but they are not studio grade. Problem with these headphones and any other consumer grade stereo system is that they do not deliver a flat true sound. These stereo systems add processing to music when you listen to it so that that music sounds good out of that stereo system. The problem with that is that you're not actually hearing what that song sounded like when it left the production studio. Studio monitors like my Audio-Technica ATH M50Xs are the same price as most consumer grade headphones, but they are studio grade and deliver a flat true sound that is completely unprocessed. So I'm able to hear exactly what's coming out of my doll and it just makes the whole mixing experience easier. My favorite studio monitors are and have always been the Yamaha HS8s and I simultaneously switch between them and my Audio-Technica ATH M50X studio monitor headphones and I couldn't be happier with this setup. Here's my final tip. Mix for other people. It's the best way to develop your mixing skill. Mixing is very logical, so it's much easier to approach and practice mixing when you're doing it on a song that's not yours. Am I saying don't mix your own music? No, you can certainly mix your own music, but the problem with mixing your own music is that you have too much emotions wrapped up in the song, so you're not going to be the best decision maker when it comes to mixing that song. And too many emotions make any logical process more difficult. Also, I find that when I mix my own songs, I worry about pointless little details 
that nobody else is going to ever hear or worry about. And that alone can stifle the overall result of your mix. When you mix other people's songs, you don't hear those little details. So you can focus on the mix as a whole, which is how a mix should be thought of, and that is as a whole. That's the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Unfortunately, in this video, I was not able to cover every square inch of the mixing process. I saved that information for my production course students. So if you would like to learn how to mix music like a pro as fast as possible, check out my course at the top of the description below. Right now, I'm offering a free consultation over the phone to anyone who signs up to my music production course. On these phone calls, I like to figure out the best way in order for you to approach music production so that you can learn it in the most effective way possible, and then we discuss how to start building your music production career. If this sounds like something of interest to you, I have a link at the top of the description below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.